What's going on, Pixel viewers? Today I'm going to show you to take a sketch and turn it into a vector masterpiece. Sponsored by YouNoob.net, the Newbie Network. Music on Pixel.info is brought to you by Akin. I'm also going to touch on some new features they added to Illustrator CS4. Let's go take a look. Alright, looks like we're about ready to begin. I've already opened the sketch in Adobe Illustrator. The first thing I like to do is lock the original art layer and give it a name of BG. Now add a new layer and call it Base. I generally like to do 95% of my drawing on this layer, there are times when it's necessary to add more, but I'll cross that road when we get there. Make sure that the layer called base is selected. You know that it is because of the blue highlight on that layer. Grab the direct select tool, and then grab the pen tool. Alright, now go to your foreground and stroke icons, and set the fill to none. You do that by simply clicking on the fill box and bring it to the front, and then by selecting the line the box with the line through it. It's the third little box right underneath. The first one is for solid color, the second one is for gradient fill, and the third one is to null that one out. So now let's begin vectorizing. Alright, I'm going to start on the hand with the P set. And what I'm going to be doing is outlining the entire hand and not worrying about the details inside just yet. Notice that I'm moving nodes around. I am doing that by placing a node close to where I want, and before I let go of the mouse, I hold the space bar. This allows me to more accurately place the node where I need it to go. Now that I've closed everything up, I'm going to begin adding the details. So go ahead and take a few moments and get the rest of the guy outlined and add the details inside. In the instance of the eyes, I want a perfect circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the toolbar and grab the oval tool. Or for you keyboard junkies, I'm going to hit the L key. That way I can get the perfect circle. Don't forget to save often. When you think everything is outlined and all the detail added in, turn it on and off the sketch layer and so you can see uh, what areas you have missed. Go ahead and keep doing this until all the detail is complete. Alright, this part's important. Go ahead and grab your outlines, leaving the details inside alone, and give them a fill. Okay, now this all looks out of whack. Don't worry, we're going to take a few seconds and place them where they need to go. I'm going to use control and the left bracket key to send it back one level. On a Mac it's command and left bracket. I'm going to continue hitting this uh, combination until it is behind the object I want it to be behind. For example, notice the shirt sleeve is above the arm. That's not right. I know I want it all the way back so I'm going to hit the control, shift, and the left bracket key. That's going to send it all the way back to the back. On the Mac, it's just command instead of control. The same thing with the ear. Notice one eyebrow is covered up by the hair. Sending it back isn't going to be the right thing, so let's send it all the way to the front. The process is the same, sending it the back or the front. The only difference is the bracket key. So if we want to send something up to the front, we're going to hit control, shift, and the right bracket. Now it's on top. Go ahead and pick some base colors you like for the shirt, the hair, and the skin, and the necklace. And now for the blob brush. I want to go over a few settings first, so double click the blob brush icon and the options will show up. I'm going to be using a Wacom tablet so this will help out immensely. The two check boxes to the top do exactly what they say, so I'm just going to leave them unchecked for right now. Now fidelity at its lowest number is 0.5. This allows you to record exactly what movements you make. Now the higher the number, the more the computer tries to guess what you meant. So for me, 2.5 is the right number. Smoothness does exactly what it says. I like to keep it about around 7 for me. If you don't have a Wacom tablet, then the rest doesn't really apply to you. But I do, so I'll explain to you what they do. Size is the size of the brush. I'm going to change it from fixed to pressure, so that I can let the amount of pressure I place on my pen to decide how big the brush is. The variation slider is saying how small can this brush be, or how big can it be. I like to set it around 4 or 5 points. 
That way I get a nice variation. The other two options can be summed up the same way as the first one. Just note that you cannot have a variation on roundness if it's at 100%. It needs to be less than 90% to be able to vary. Now that I have the explanation out of the way, let's draw. Here I grab a fill color that is a little bit darker than the skin and I start to fill in a shadow. I'm going to pick a light source and draw the shadow on the opposite side. As you can see, doing this takes some tweaking, but is a hell of a lot faster than the way I used to do this before. Now that Illustrator has added the blob brush, this makes Illustrator a true illustration tool. And it's as simple as that. So go ahead and take a few more moments and apply this to the rest of the drawing. So now, take what I taught you and try it on your own sketch. But if you feel still a little intimidated and want to use my sketch, go ahead and grab that from germbo.com. And that's all I got for Pixel.info. See you later, Pixel viewers.